Hi, this is Almir at Worst Asian with Cape Town Emergency Medicine and this is part one in our video series about rapid sequence intubation. In part one, we will be reviewing the equipment required and how to check and set up that equipment. There are many excellent mnemonics and memory aids available to assist you in remembering what equipment to gather. The minimum equipment required in preparation for and during the performance of rapid sequence intubation are the following. You should have a high flow oxygen delivery device or oxygen mask with tubing. You should have a selection of suction devices, in this case soft tip suction, a hard Yankauer type suction device, this is what it would look like outside its sheath. You should have a selection of airway assist devices such as oropharyngeal airways, and you should have a ventilation device, in this case a self-inflating bag valve mask ventilation device with a selection of mask sizes. Your equipment should be checked and ready to use. You should have a laryngoscope with a selection of blades, checked and in good working order, and you should have a selection of sizes of endotracheal tubes. We suggest the size you're going to use and one size above and one size below in size. You should have a 10 mole syringe to inflate the pilot cuff and the cuff of the ET tube. You should also have a device for secondary confirmation of placement, in this case a calorimetric CO2 detector, a capnometer and capnography would be ideal, and some tape to secure the tube or a commercial tube securing device. You should also have equipment available in anticipation of a difficult airway. We suggest a minimum of the following a superbiotic device such as a laryngeal mask airway, a selection of long stylets or gum elastic bougie, and a surgical airway kit, in this case a, tracheost case a tracheostomy kit, you could also have a surgical cricothyroidotomy kit available. Other pieces of equipment that could be of use is a wooden tongue spatula, a long stem McGill's forceps, and you should also have your drugs drawn up to the correct dose and ready to use. In order to check our equipment, we will talk about checking the laryngoscope and checking the endotracheal tubes. Take your laryngoscope and blade and assemble it in the correct manner. Ensure that it works in the position of use, which is upside down. The butt cap should be firmly attached and there should be no battery play inside. The light should be functioning even when the blade is stressed. Make sure that there's no jiggle or free play in the blade and ensure that the bulb itself is tightly screwed in and not jiggling about. Your laryngoscope is now checked and ready for use. The endotracheal tube should be checked for a functioning bulb without compromising the sterility of the ET tube. We suggest the following. Open the syringe you're going to use and then open just the corner of the endotracheal tube you're going to use and retrieve the pilot cup. Inflate the bulb while still inside the packaging and check it inside the packaging. Sustained pressure on the cuff for a few seconds and making sure that the pilot bulb remains inflated without losing any pressure in the cuff should be sufficient. At this time, deflate the cuff completely and your ET tube is now ready for use without having compromised the sterility of the tube. And that's it, the end of part one, equipment and preparation of equipment for rapid sequence intubation.